Yes, mommy, head out the back. I'm gonna sit on mommy. Say bye bye, doggy. Bye bye, doggy. Get home at school. Yep, I'll see you when you get home from school. The way the bag is the back. All right, guys, it is Monday morning. Let's do a Kylo update slash just an update. Over the last few days, we completely decided to do a screen detox for Kylo. We started on Friday, today is Monday. And I'm gonna be real with you, I was a little hesitant <laughs> because I was like, uh, what? That's gonna make my life miserable, not being able to let my kid watch TV. And then the other thing I was like, that's not realistic. Like letting your kid watch no TV, that's not realistic. I'm gonna have the worst weekend of my life. Like I was very hesitant, but me and my husband just decided that it was the right thing to do for Kylo. And I just wanna say, that doesn't mean it's the right thing for every kid. So let me explain. I do think that just in general, like there's literally studies to prove this. And at the end of the day, we can have opinions all we want, but when something's a fact, it's a fact. And there's literally studies showing what it does to kids' brain matter and what the effects and causes are. And the reality is like excessive screen time, more than one to two hours a day, has a major effect on their behavior, their ability to learn so much. And that's just a fact. But I do think every kid reacts to it differently. For Kylo, like I have friends who let their kids watch TV and it just doesn't really affect their kid. Like their kid's speech is amazing. Their kid does, never has any tantrums, doesn't have social issues. Again, loves to learn, do puzzles and all these fun things. Like doesn't really have that many bad effects on their kid. Their kid doesn't get addicted to it. Like I have a friend, all those things. Her kid's amazing. Her kid is so smart. She said never barely has any tantrums. She's literally so smart. She's amazing at learning. She loves to read and do all these like things. She doesn't ask for the TV, so she's not addicted to it. So every kid is different. And now you have Kylo. We used to have boundaries with Kylo around the TV. Like we would do max one hour a day, literally only an hour a day. And when it exceeded that hour, that's it. We did other things. If you've been watching my vlogs, you know this. I would do sensory tables with him. We would go to the park and play with sand. We would go outside for hours. Like I had boundaries and I would do all these like sensory activities with him. But then once like we started planning the move and we literally moved across country and our whole lives were just flipped upside down. All of a sudden we kind of just like, now we're in a place where we're super distracted and busy, under stress from, you know, trying to move across the country and plan everything. Then we're in another country in an Airbnb where we didn't have access to our normal sensory activities. Our whole entire structure just like fell apart if I'm being honest. And the boundaries were just completely lost. Like he was at the point where he was watching TV for like on a good day, four hours, on a bad day, six hours. And he started getting to the point where it was obvious he was like addicted to it. He would come up up to us and ask us to watch TV constantly, constantly asking TV, TV time, TV time. I want to watch TV. I want TV constantly. And it was almost like in his mind when he was bored, he needed to just watch TV. There was no other possibilities to keep him entertained outside of watching TV, which is bad because I started noticing it was affecting his imagination. Like he was no longer using his imagination to play. He was no longer independently playing. I noticed a huge drop off with the independent play. Like he used to independently just go in the corner, play with his toys and be creative and make like fun little games for himself stopped doing that, no longer was able to play by himself. I also started noticing that other kids around his age were like more interested in learning. And I know every kid is different, truly. Like every kid is gonna have different interests. And I do think regardless, Kylo's just like a physical kid, which I love that about him. He is so physically strong. And that kid is a tank when it comes to like climbing, running, doing all these physical things. Like that is his strength. He's incredible at it. Like when I tell you that, that kid is incredible. Like the kid was walking at 10 months, okay? Like he's a tank physically. but. When he was a lot younger, I noticed he was interested in like learning and books. He used to love books. He would go sit in the corner and just look at the pictures and read them. Obviously not actually read, like the kid was like one at the time. But like he would just go sit in the corner and look at them and it's just, he loved them. But I started noticing over the last like four months, like once the chaos started happening around like March, even like I wanna say February-ish, I started noticing we would go to do a puzzle together. He would do one piece and be done and be bored. Or I would buy him a new toy and he would only play with that new toy for five minutes and that's it, he would be bored of the new toy. It was like like boredom was a constant thing. Nothing was good enough for him. Nothing was entertaining enough. Learning wasn't interesting enough. And why? That's because when the TV, like you have to imagine a toddler's brain, they're very underdeveloped. Like kids don't have developed brains. When you have an underdeveloped brain watching the TV for hours, you have to imagine how much like dopamine they're getting and how much heavy entertainment they're getting. Then imagine now they're gonna go do something like read a book. That's boring. Why would a toddler that's watching hours of heavy entertainment on a TV screen all day be interested in learning and watching a puzzle and reading a book? 
why would they? Like that's boring compared to that, right? So I totally get it and it makes sense. Not just that though, like remember in the last vlog, I told you guys, oh, we have to do a major toddler update. Like Kylo has officially turned it up, terrible twos. Y'all, I chalked it up to terrible twos. I chalked it up. Let me just say over the last few months, it has been like 10 tantrums a day on a good day. It would be seven o'clock in the morning and he would already have two tantrums. He would also wake up completely miserable. Wake up in the morning completely in a bad mood. He would wake up from his nap so cranky. He was spending a majority of the day throwing tantrums, being very whiny, being very cranky. Just tantrum after tantrum after tantrum. And I literally remember saying to my sister like, where's my sweet little boy? Like y'all know Kylo is the sweetest kid. He started having tantrums around like 11 months. It's totally normal to have tantrums, but it would be like one tantrum a day, right? or maybe two max. And it was totally manageable. He would have his little tantrum. We would get through it together. It was totally manageable. But right around that time when, you know, our whole structure fell apart and he started watching more TV, about like two months after that, we started noticing like 10 tantrums a day, like I said, spending the majority of the day whining, just whining and fussing and uh, uh, just like a lot of whining. And we're like, oh my God, where's our sweet little boy? What happened to my sweet little kid? And then everyone always tells you, no, the terrible twos. So I just kind of chalked it up to that. Like this is a phase, it's terrible twos, it'll die out. Well, like four months in, it never died out. He's just constantly fussy, 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 tantrum, 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 like bad. So I did some research and I started looking up like how many tantrums a day is normal? Like when do we stop using the terrible two excuse? <laughs> when do we decide this is not normal? So I started looking it up and the age of two, the max tantrums they should have a day is like three and on a really bad day, like four. Like if your kid is having more than that, they were basically saying there's definitely an issue there either with screen time or obviously just other issues. So I knew he wasn't having other issues just because he didn't have sign of other issues. So I knew immediately that it was the screen time. Then I started doing more research and looking at the studies they've done and what it does to the brain matter. And again, this is not me judging anyone. Like, like I'm literally telling you guys, every kid is different. I have friends with kids who just don't get addicted to the TV. Like maybe they just, I don't know, every kid is different. With Kylo, he definitely got like addicted to it. Like I have a friend whose kid never asks to watch it. Even though she doesn't like have boundaries or limit screen time, her kid just never asks to watch it, doesn't care. Her kid loves learning, has amazing speech. You know what I mean? Like it, it affects kids differently differently. Although I will say, even though it affects kids differently, I do think an excessive amount is going to affect their like imaginative play and independent play. But even yeah, to the point where like we couldn't even do a car ride because in the car ride, he'd be fussing the whole time. And it, why? Because it's boring to them. Like again, they're used to that entertainment. So why would you want to sit in a car? So anyways, yeah, I started doing some research and looking at the studies they've done on TV. And I just decided like as a mom, we all do what's best for our kid. If your kid watches TV and they aren't addicted to it, they don't ask you, they're not having multiple tantrums, they're great at learning, then totally cool, right? But when me as a mom, when I'm watching my kid literally struggling, having this many tantrums a day, and I know when he was having screen time limited, he was such a chill dude, and now he's like changed to the opposite, then as a mother, that concerns me. Like that concerns me. So on Friday, we just decided, okay, no TV today. And I wanna recap with you guys. I'm also gonna share with you how we've been managing, what we've been doing. I wanna share with you guys what we got at um, Gabe's, which is like a really dope discount store here in the US. Like y'all have so many discount stores in the South. Anyways, day one, I'm not gonna lie to you, guys, I was really hesitant. Like my husband had to like cheerlead me and be like, we can do this, we're fine. Like my husband's more of like a, no, we got this, like go into something head first. And I'm more like a comfort person, you know? And he's like, nope, we got this. So he really had to cheerlead me and I'm so glad that he did. We made it through day one and day one was hard. I'm not gonna lie to you guys because he was so used to watching TV, he would constantly ask us. And when we would tell him, no, no TV today, Kylo. Like the way I would say it is, no, we can't watch TV, but we can do this instead. We can play Play-Doh or you can play with your kinetics in. Which one do you want to do? I would give him two other options. But still, hearing that no for the TV, he would throw the biggest tantrum on that first day. By day two, when we would tell him no, he still threw a little bit of tantrums when we told him no. By day three, which was yesterday, I told him no to the TV. He still was asking, and even today, he still asks. So he's still asking for the TV, even though it's day four of no screens. So he still needs a little bit of a detox. <laughs> But um, yesterday and today, when he asked for him, we told him no, he was fine. Literally, this is how the conversation went. He came up, I wanna watch TV. And I said, no, Kylo, we're not gonna watch TV. We're gonna paint our cars or we can do our Play-Doh. And he would say, I want to paint my cars and walk away and go where, where he knows we have the paint and he'd pick a couple colors. That's it. Why? Because in his brain now, he just experienced the last two days, like, oh, a life without TV is not the end of the world. There's actually other things I can do that are fun and I can actually use my imagination and play independently. Whereas that first two days, it's like, like, oh my God, no TV, no, what am I gonna do? It's the end of the world. There's nothing else out there for me to do. Once he started seeing there's so much other things that he can do, it allows his brain to now 
detox from that constant dopamine and that constant entertainment and realize he can do and have fun using his imagination. So we've been doing so many activities again. I feel like I'm now that I'm settled in the new house, like I'm back to my routine. You guys know I'm big on my routines because Kylo thrives on a routine. He really does thrive on it. And the last few months have just been pure chaos. So there's definitely a moving across the country to take into effect with everything. I know that that affects a toddler too, just taking them out of the routine. So now that we are settled, I'm definitely back on a good routine. I'm back to doing my sensory activities with him. And we've been doing so much fun things. I have to show you guys, I'll pop it up here. I got this really cool toddler Crayola set. It is slightly pricey on Amazon. I think it's like $20, which I tried to look at the dollar store in Walmart to see if they had this exact set and they didn't unfortunately, but I liked this specific set because the cups are like more spill proof. Like they have that dip in the center and then you can put the paintbrushes in there. So I thought it was good, just like a one-time purchase. And then when you want to buy the little refillable paints, Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree and Five Below here in Tennessee, and I'm, I'm sure the most um, Dollar Trees in the States have the Crayola washable paints for literally a dollar. I think they're actually even 79 cents. I don't even know, but they're so cheap. So you just buy the refills now that I have those nice little cups. I'll actually see if I can find a cheaper version of those little cups and I'll link everything down below. I will link everything down below for you guys in terms of the sensory activities. We've been doing that. He's been painting his cars and then we'll let him take the hose and wash off his cars. So he loves that. Also get some cheap soap from the dollar store and he loves seeing the bubbles when he adds the water. Go closer, buddy. Wash out the brushes. Good job. They're all soapy. Another idea is to actually bring out his sensory bin, like an empty bin, just any cheap bin you can find, even from the dollar store, fill it up with soap and water too. And then he can actually put his cars that he painted in the soapy water. And you can even get him like a little toothbrush and he can like brush and clean. I actually forgot to get that yesterday when we were at the dollar store, but he can brush and clean the paint off his cars out of all of these little, you know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> the little tricky small areas, right guy? Yeah, I like that. Yes, this is a gold car, right? What color is this? Gold. Yes, gold car. But it also has this color. Which color too? Blue. Yeah, so it's a blue and gold car. Very cool. We've been doing kinetic sand now. I found this really cool kit at Walmart, but there's also, you could literally go to Five Below or Dollar Tree or Dollar General and get kinetic sand. Walmart has it too, super cheap, and create little themes for them. We have been back on our sensory activities, y'all. And like I said, actually, my husband's sister works at a daycare, and we spoke with her as well just to kind of get her opinion. And she said she can always notice the kids that are addicted to screen because they tend to have a hard time playing independently. They tend to not be interested in books and puzzles. And sometimes they'll even go up to the teacher or the daycare worker and ask to watch TV. And I just didn't want that to be Kylo because like I said, I was noticing those signs in my own home. So I'm like, I don't want him to go to school now and go ask his teachers to watch TV. Like how freaking embarrassing is that? Seriously? Yeah, I'm so happy that we did this. This, let me just... Okay, let's preface this. Day four, what have I noticed? Kylo is a completely different kid. Like I honestly could cry guys, I'm not going to cry. I already cried this morning because I was just so proud that like I made this decision. I'm not going to cry, but I feel like I've gotten my sweet little angel back. Like he is back to being his sweet little Kylo. He didn't have one tantrum today, not a tantrum. Yesterday, I think he had just one and it literally lasted like 20 seconds. It was laughable. He's barely having any tantrums. Like I said, today hasn't even had any. On the car ride to Gabe's today and back, he was silent the entire time. He spoke like twice and he was just like oh mommy look at the rocks and then he was like look at the excavator and that's it he was silent the entire time just in the car silent and at one point when we were at the stoplight I turned around to see what he was doing and he was just like this staring out the window just fine it's totally silent so he's able to be bored now his brain is able to calm down and be bored because he doesn't need that constant dopamine if your kid is like kylo and you feel like they might be addicted to the screen and you're thinking about doing a detox just know it's possible i know it seems like oh my god i don't want to do that it's the end of the world it is possible the way that we tackled it and i just want to say day one and day two are hard day one was the hardest because you as a mom you're like not used to it i will say as a parent it has made me get creative now like now i'm actually getting creative before i would be like oh god i have to cook what do i do just turn the tv on right now that i was committed to a detox it forced me to get creative i'm like okay now i have to think about what to do and how to entertain this kid while i try to cook and what have i been doing that's like the number one question is what do you do like when you need to get things done around the house what do you do if you're not using screens get your kids involved and that's what i used to do back home with kylo like i used to do this is not rocket science to me like i literally used to do that but like i said with moving across the country the last few months our life has been so stressful that i will admit as a parent 
parent, I've slacked off on a lot of things and let the boundaries slip. So I used to do this, but I would just get him involved. Literally, when I need to do the dishes, I don't do them while he naps. I'm like, oh, we need to do the dishes. Perfect. I will use that as an activity for us to do to kill some time later. So I'll say, oh, time to do the dishes, Kylo. And he loves it. First, we'll empty them. I open the drawer so he can just throw the cutlery in. He doesn't know how to organize it. So I just let him throw it in. Totally fine. Then he'll pass me the plates. Once the dishwasher is empty, then he sits on the counter. It's better if they have a learning stool, but we don't have his learning tower yet. We haven't gotten a ship, but he sits on the counter while I'm watching him. Obviously, he likes to take the little faucet hose and he'll rinse the dishes and then pass them to and I, I'm obviously still holding them and then I'll put them in the dishwasher. So we'll do dishes together when it's time for cooking. Obviously cooking's a little limited because you want to be super safe that they're not too close to the stove with the fire, especially our, well, any stove, but especially our stove has the open fire. It's a gas one, but cooking, I get him more involved in like the prep process. But now that he's so good at independent play because he has that screen detox, what does he do while I'm cooking or getting things done? He plays by himself and he's able to now. Before it's like, I could totally understand why that question is. It's cause like when your kid is addicted to the screen, they're not able to play by themselves. So you do need to just turn that TV on so that you can get things done. Like I used to do that all the time, but now he'll just be in the backyard playing. Obviously I can see him the way our house layout is. I can see him while I'm cooking, while I'm cooking or getting something done. And like I said, I try to get him involved in as much tasks as possible. Yesterday we had to clean the bathroom. I was like, let's clean the bathroom, Kylo. Shake off the mats, let's vacuum, let's mop. Like get them involved. Any sort of house chore that you need to do, don't do it while they're napping, do it while they're awake and get them involved. And they love it too. It gives them a sense of responsibility. It gives them a sense of independence. I cannot tell you, I feel like I have my sweet angel back. He is now like almost tantrum free. Like literally just back to having like max one tantrum a day. Yesterday he had one, today he hasn't had any so far and it's 12.30. Oh God, y'all have my sweet little baby boy back and I just feel so disappointed that I let things get out of hand. But I will say as a parent, this whole process has made me get more creative and look for ways to fill in time. It's also made me get off my phone more. Before when he's just watching TV, then I'm just like on my screen too, right? Now I notice we connect so much more one-to-one -one. like we used to a few months ago before the whole chaos started, we used to just connect more. Now we just are able to connect and we play like together more. We're doing activities more so I'm spending more quality time with him too. I'm getting less of my screen too and we're getting outside more. So the way that we tackled and handled the hardest days is getting out of the house. That's the easiest way to kill hours of time and to not use the screen. Yes, that's a black pickup truck over there. Black. Yes, it's black. Can I see your hands? Mud. Mud. Stinky water. So go anywhere you can. Go to a farm. Go to, if you have any fairs near you, go to Walmart. Walmart is one of our favorite activities to do because it's free. Just walk in. And Kylo, we've already kind of trained him or taught him or, you know, whatever, raised him that you don't get a toy every time you go to the store. So we don't have an issue with bringing him to stores. So he likes to go to Walmart, look in the toy aisle for literally two hours. He will spend two hours looking at the toy aisle, taking them off the shelf, plays with them. And then he always knows to put them back. I love going to Gabe's with him. That's how we killed time this morning was going to Gabe. He knows he doesn't get something every time. Before we get in the store, I say to him, remember Kylo, the toys are not ours. They're not ours. We play with them and then put them back on the shelf. And he knows what that means. Once in a blue moon, like I'll keep a good balance where I will let him pick one toy. But every time we go into the store, I make sure he knows we're not leaving with the toy every time. So that's a good activity to do. Go outside for walks, take your kid to a construction site on a Sunday morning when there's no workers there and they're not working. Let him dig the dirt. Yes, it cleans up the street. What is that? Dirt. Dirt, mud. Let me see your hands, mister. Oh my goodness. There's so many sensory table activities you can do. Like there are so many things you can do to get creative. And I also noticed that now he was doing, like getting more steps in and being more active and using his brain more. He was getting tired more. He's been napping for three hours, guys, because he's been exhausted from like using his brain more and getting more steps and doing more activities. So I know it seems daunting. Like I was literally Friday, me and my husband were trying to decide like, should we do this? Like, how are we gonna do this? And we're just like, we're doing it. Like Friday morning, we're like, we're doing it. I'm just like, oh my God. God, Lord bless me. What are we going to do today to kill time and keep this kid away from the TV? Like it feels daunting and it feels impossible. I'm here to tell you it's not impossible and your kid will be a sweet little angel by the end of it. Oh, also forgot to mention y'all. I bought him some puzzles this morning. Like I said to you before when we would do puzzles, he would literally do one piece and walk away, be totally uninterested in it. I literally cried this morning because we came home from Gabe's. I bought him this puzzle. He sat down for five minutes and completed both of these puzzles. And I know that might not seem like a big deal to some people, 
but listen to me, okay? Kylo would do one puzzle piece before and be completely uninterested in puzzles. Just totally not interested. Like, it was boring to him. Now that he's had this screen detox, he finished both of these puzzles. He sat down for five minutes and calmly tried to figure it out. It's like he was interested in learning. I literally cried because I just felt like that was such a milestone and such a moment and just reaffirmed to me that I made the right decision. Anyways, let me show you guys what I got at Gabe's. Now that he has had this screen detox, he's so much more interested in books and puzzles and like shape sorting and just all these things. So I wanted to set up his little playroom in there and really set it up as an environment for him to go to when he needs to independent play. When he's bored, he can go into his little playroom and there's lots of, you know, learning activities and playing activities that he can do. Like right now, it's all of his cars are in there, which he loves playing with his cars, but I wanted there to be some variety in there for him. So I got some really cool things. So this is what I found at Gabe's. You don't need to spend a lot of money, y'all. Like five below, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, and Gabe's Ross as well is a good one. Although the Ross toy section was like empty at the location near me, but I'm sure they'll restock at some point. Just all these like bargain stores, that's where you can get good stuff for your kids instead of paying full price on a place like Amazon or Walmart. We're at Gabe's right now and you can get this three pack wooden puzzle with letters. I'm assuming the other one is numbers. I can't see it. And then shapes and it's only $9.99. So I found this three pack of these puzzles. It was $9.99. Like I said, he's loving them already. I got this cute little wooden organizer to put the puzzles in too from Amazon. I do think I might need a bigger one. I got the small one. I wonder if I needed the bigger one. I'm also debating on just getting like a bookshelf and putting the puzzles there. I'm trying to think of what I want to do. Then I found the Melissa and Doug wooden puzzles there, which I've been wanting to get these for him for forever, but I never bought them because I always would see them at the store and I'd be like, oh, Kylo doesn't like puzzles. Like, cause he would just do one piece and that's it. But now he's able to actually sit down and really use his imagination, use his thinking skills and learn. So I got him this one, the little truck one. I know he will love the car one. I was actually kind of shocked. These were $7.99. I thought they'd be a little cheaper, but they are way cheaper. Walmart had them for $14.99. Amazon has them for $14 and $12.99, depending on the style of it. But anyways, I got three of these. So now he has a bunch of puzzles. I don't need to buy any more puzzles. Then I saw this on Amazon. And when I tell you, I immediately was like, this is for him. This is a shape sorter, but it's a dump truck shape sorter. All the shapes go in here and then you can dump the shapes out. This had nearly five star review on Amazon. Like if your kid loves trucks, this is gonna help them learn because it's also involving like a dump truck and he just loves trucks. So yeah, like he is going to love this. Also, I just wanna say whenever I get him like stuff like this where there's so much at once, I never give him all of these things all at once. Whenever I get him a new toy, I just give him one here and there. I don't wanna give him like 10 new toys at once. Then I found this little cute activity, plaster figurines at Gabe's. It was $4.99. They're little cute plaster figurines that he can paint. It does come with paint. I don't know if this paint is washable, but I already have the Crayola washable paint that I like. So I don't know if this one's washable. I basically mostly got this for the little plaster pets. Like he's going to love doing this little turtle, little doggy, and he can just sit and paint them. For $4.99, I figured this was a cute activity. I kind of hope that they wash off too. I think they're gonna wash off so then he can do it again another day. Also, I wanna show you guys that I have this really cool idea. I bought activity bins from Amazon. Each bin is gonna be like a different activity and it's gonna be organized and labeled so that when we are bored and I wanna do something with him instead of watching the TV, we can go and take our activity bins and he can pick one of the activities. It's such an easy way to keep things organized and also to stay away from the screen. You know, instead of turning the TV on, go to your activity bin. It's just kind of like reframing your mind. Okay, let me finish showing you guys what I got and then I'll talk about whether or not I plan on reintroducing screen again. Also got this for him, which I think he will love these. These are wooden blocks. I have been wanting to get him the wooden ones rather than the plastic ones. I feel like they're also just more sturdy too. It's just less exposure to plastic, but obviously he still has some plastic, but I just like the wooden ones. This is Melissa and Doug and it was $12.99. I'm very curious to see what this retails for on somewhere like Amazon. Wooden blocks. Let's see. Oh, here you go. $17.59. The exact same one on Amazon. So I got it for $12.99 and I think he's going to love this. He's going to love stacking them and then he likes to destroy it and knock it over. Let's see how high we can build it and then knock it down. So he's going to love this. You guys saw in the last vlog, I got that toy shelf for him with the little bins. So in one of the bins, I will put these blocks and then in another one of the bins, I'll put a different, like I can just organize it like that. This has 75 pieces. I feel like I might not give him all 75. That could just be a huge mess to clean up at the end of the night. Although he's been great at doing his clean. He's always been great at cleaning up at the end of the night before bed, but 75 feels like a lot. I'll probably just give him like 30 blocks. So last thing I got, I decided to do a mud kitchen in our backyard for Kylo. I've been seeing them all over and I just know Kylo's going to love it. So 
I still haven't purchased one yet. I'm trying to look at which one to buy. I found one on Amazon that I really like. You can get mud kitchens for like 90 to $130 on Amazon. You can also build them for super cheap if you're really like crafty and handy. But yeah, I haven't purchased it yet, but you can do such cool things like fill up little squeezy bottles with a little bit of like stained like beet water or you can mix chalk with water and then it makes the water different colors and you can have like little squeezy tubes. There's so much fun things you can do. And I know that that will keep Kylo very entertained for hours. The other day he played with his kinetic sand for literally an hour and he asks for it almost every day now. So I found this Melissa and Doug pots and pans play set. Love that it's all stainless steel. It also comes with little spoon. And so this will be perfect when I get him his mud kitchen. I did find this a bit like, I think it was $19.99. Yeah, it was $19.99. I did think that it would be a little bit cheaper, but it is stainless steel. I'm curious what it is on Amazon. Oh, it's $23.99 on Amazon. So I did save $4. So still a pretty good price at Gabe's. I'm curious if Five Below would have had this cheaper, but I didn't want to go to two different stores. But yeah, he will love this for his little mud kitchen. I will share with you guys once you do the mud kitchen. You can also get your kid just like a really cheap, large plastic bin, pour some sand in it, and they have a little sandbox for your backyard or your balcony, whatever you guys have. There's so many fun things that you can do. And I'm just like, it's definitely made me get back to my creative side. Like I said, I used to do all these things before, but with the chaos, our whole routine and structure just completely demolished. And I just feel so good now. I feel like I have my sweet little angel. I just realized there's like two little people in here. He's so cute. So that is what I got at Gabe's. And then I will be organizing finally his activity bins. And I don't have a label maker yet, but that's okay. I actually think I'm just gonna do little chalk labels so that I can change it when if the activity bin changes. So I will show you guys how I plan on organizing his activity bins and we will do that together. Okay guys, I look so rough right now. That's why I didn't even want to show myself on camera, but I have to explain this. So I love this toy shop that I got Kylo. It is perfect, but there's like this gap along the back there and his little cars keep getting stuck back there. Like these small little ones, even like the little Paw Patrol figures, they keep going back there and then he asks for help. So anyways, I have to keep constantly coming and like fixing it. Fun story actually, he was on FaceTime with Steph and he's actually so good at FaceTime now. He takes the phone and like props it up, but the phone fell behind the shelf and Steph was dying of laughter because all she sees from her end is Kylo on the phone like struggling looking behind the thing trying to get the phone it was hilarious but anyways I just thought this is actually going to be perfect for that too I'm going to put this on the shelf as like a filler so that nothing falls behind there anymore so these are just perfect like as moms our lives are already so chaotic and the last thing I need is to be like fishing for toys behind furniture and under furniture Y'all, you know, he went to school today, but he definitely made sure to mess up his little toy room. So now, I don't have any more issues. And I already know how mischievous Kylo is. He's going to, cause by the way, he loves purposely putting the cars back there so that he can purposely go get them and ask for help. Like, you know how toddlers are. So anyways, he's going to realize that I put something here to block it. And he's probably going to try to fit his toys in there and then ask for help. He'll be like, help, my toy's stuck, my toy tuck. That's how he does it. So I might even put some right along here. I probably shouldn't have even done that. <laughs> 
Okay, let's organize some activity bins for Kylo. So I came up with this idea after finding these amazing bins on Amazon. I already have one of these bins organized because we've been using this activity a lot, which is painting. These bins, are they not amazing for organizing your crafts or like toddler activities? So they come with the little insert. Don't mind, like you said, we've been using this one a lot, so it is a little dirty, but it comes with this little insert so you can organize the activities. Basically, my intention with these is in my old house, I think I mentioned before, like I would just have a bunch of his activities shoved into a drawer, and then when it came time to actually do activities, you're kind of looking at everything, and you're like, wait, what do I even do with this? Okay, there's markers, okay, there's some books, okay, there's some paint, and okay, there's some figurines, and maybe some Play-Doh, like you just don't know what to do. So creating the activity bins ahead of time, when you want to do an activity, Activity, you just pull out the bin and everything you need is in that bin for that specific activity I only got four bins. I feel like I'm going to need a lot more than that in the future I should actually probably go grab all of his activity stuff <laughs> So first thing I want to do is make a coloring bin because y'all his coloring books and everything It's just like all over the place I feel like I can do coloring books and stickers in one maybe so let's organize a coloring bin for Kylo I do wonder if these come in a bigger size because I definitely need more bins So I'm thinking of getting the bigger size plus this size because I think some activities are going to need the larger bin yeah, like stuff like this is really chunky and won't fit, but I don't even know if I'll use this like container this came with. Okay, don't mind Kylo definitely needs new markers. I just threw out a bunch because they were all dry So right now this is all we're working with. <laughs> we are actually going to the dollar store tomorrow to buy more For the labels, I did get chalkboard labels because I feel like bins like this, I'm going to be constantly changing them and putting out new activities. So I didn't want to make permanent labels and then, you know, have to constantly change it. These you can easily wipe off and then rewrite. This one, like I said before, is Kylo's paint bin, which is already been used and has been shown a lot of love, but these just fit perfectly in here. I mentioned it earlier that I love these little toddler cups because they're pretty spill proof. Like they just kind of keep the paint contained. I will link the exact ones down below that I have, but I'm also gonna see if I can find cheaper ones that come in like a big pack or set, we'll see. And these are the Crayola washable paints and they fit perfectly in here, six and then four in the smaller ones so these are perfect he has his little paint brushes i actually again plan on going to the dollar store and getting more paint because these are empty so i want to get more paint i also want to get smaller brushes because he's really been loving to paint those little figurines too that i bought so i'm going to probably try to find a few more of these little figurines at the dollar store for him to paint so let's add this in here Okay, next I feel like we need an entire bin dedicated to Play-Doh because yes, although everything fits in this little Play-Doh bag right now, I know it's not always going to. <laughs> Maybe for now I should keep, no, let me separate it. Just for now, I'll make a separate Play-Doh bin because I just know for Christmas coming up, I'm gonna put some fun Play-Doh things on his list because he loves playing with Play-Doh and there's like an ice cream station for Play-Doh things. So I just know he's gonna need a whole bin for his Play-Doh stuff. Plus it can be more organized in this rather than just everything in this bag. And he likes to take 
take the whole bag and then just dump everything on the floor. I feel like with this, he'll be able to see everything laid out. Although this is a really cute Play-Doh bag. Might still keep it. I also want to do a whole bin for like sensories to fill up his sensory table bins. So like dried beans, oats, rice, different sensory things that he can play with. But I don't have that stuff yet. I need to go to the store, buy like some cheap dried beans and all that cool stuff. So I will buy more bins because we're actually on our third bin now. And he also has been loving kinetic sand. So I want to do a whole like kinetic sand bin too and buy little like dinosaur figurines. I want it to be so organized so that I can literally just pull out the bin and then that is the activity. I don't think I'm gonna put all of the kinetic sand stuff in one bin. I think I'm going to get so organized to the point where it's gonna be like dinosaur kinetic sand bin, construction kinetic sand bin, like do different themes in each different bin so that when I want to go do a sensory table frame, I just pull out that bin and there's that specific theme. That's what I think I'm literally gonna do. Yeah, for now, I'll leave that aside. Let's just do the Play-Doh bin, y'all. I'm loving this so much. Like everything already looks organized. Wait till y'all see like all of the bins stacked up. I plan on putting it in the closet and keeping it away so that he doesn't see them. It just makes it more fun for them. They don't get bored of it because it's not stuff that they see all the time and have access to all the time. This is a fun little ice cream Play-Doh thing. Another fun ice cream when it comes out of the funnel over here. Oh, it fits perfectly there. Oh my God, so cute. Like you can't tell me that that is not perfect. Like so nice and organized now. And then he will have all of his different Play-Doh down here. And there's still a lot more room. I have these random bins that I used for his toy shelf and it came in a really large pack, so I just have extra. I'm curious if I can organize within this and if this would fit. Oh, this is actually cool, it fits on top, but let me see if it fits here. I don't think it fits. No, it doesn't fit. Never mind. Okay, the next bin that I feel like doing is like kind of a learning bin. So I have this really nice, which I love this bag, by the way, it's so easy to travel with, my first busy book. But what I love about this one, it's not so overwhelming. There's some busy books where there's like on a purple sheet and then like blue and yellow and orange shapes all over the place. I find it too busy. Like how can they properly concentrate and look at the shapes? I love that this one's on a white background. It's very intentional and clear. Like I absolutely love this one. Feelings, the weather, all of that. So I'm actually teaching Kylo about the months right now. We've been talking about how Christmas is in December and Halloween is in October. So I'm excited to kind of do this page with him. But anyways, I think I'm going to make this like a learning bin where I keep these sort of things, worksheets as well for him. So we're going to start really doing a lot of more of those type of things. So having a learning bin, I think is going to be key. I will keep this at the bottom just so I can keep this bag. because This is really good for traveling. And then I want to do a whole separate bin for stickers and magnets. Steph got these really cute books in in Canada at Dollarama. It's like a magnet book because you can see Kylo already put all of the little magnets in the scene. Like I said to him, carrots grow in the dirt and you know, ducks are in the water and apples grow on trees. Just like that sort of thing. And he loved this. So I think I'm gonna do a magnets and stickers kind of. You know what, for now I will put that in the learning thing. And then this is another magnet book with all of the shapes, colors. And again, they can put it in the proper scene. So these are really cool. I'll see if I can find some on Amazon. Yeah, I'll put that in there so we'll have a little learning bin I think for now I will squeeze the stickers in here no that one's just too big Just 
played with his learning bin, did his activity, and then he literally cleaned it all up. Like, I'm not joking. Cutest thing ever. Best thing I ever did. Don't bad though. Oh. Hi, can we put this one back first, baby? Let's put this bin back in the closet before we open up another. Thank you, baby. I'm telling you, best thing you can do for your kids is create these activity bins. Like, they will love them. And as you can see, they can clean them up themselves and put them away themselves. He's trying to show this to the camera. Thank you. 